Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of XCA Bytecast, a series of bite-sized tips and tricks that can be implemented into any of your project. In this video, we're going to create a generic Swift cache that can be used to cache the value for any Swift type, with optional that expiration timestamp support. We will be using NS cache, which is an in-memory based cache that Apple provides to temporarily store key and value pairs that are subject to eviction when the memory is slow. This cache can be used to store any transient values which might be expensive to calculate or retrieve, and we can reuse the object without recalculation to improve our app performance, and it can be discarded automatically when the memory is tight. And it's also thread safe, which means we can mutate it from different threads without having to implement our own lock mechanism. And now let me begin by showing you the demo. Okay, so now let me show you the demo of this cache. So here I have a sample save UI app. And basically here I have several buttons that we can use to manipulate the cache. So in the content view, there's this cache that stores the integer. And we have the button to set the cache. So it's just hard coding to use this my key as the key and this one, two, three as the value. There are several buttons setting the cache without the timestamp, setting the cache with the expired timestamps, in this case, five minutes from now, and to get the value from the cache and to invalidate the cache. Okay. Now let me try to restart the app. Okay. And see, show you. Okay, first let's set the cache without the expiration. So here it's printed in the console, set my key with value of one, two, three. Now let's try to get it from the cache. Okay, retrieve one, two, three for my cache. And let's invalidate the cache, purge all values. And let's try to get the from cache again. So now the cache doesn't exist for this key. And now let's set the cache again with the expired timestamp. In this case, five seconds. Okay, so under five seconds, it's still able to retrieve now. Past five seconds, let's try to get it again. Okay, so the cache expired for this data, for this particular key, okay? And this is the feature that we are going to build. Now, let's just begin by creating a new project in Xcode. Project. Okay, just give it a name of cache and let me set this to full screen. We can just disable the preview. First, as NS cache only supports storing reference base type, we need to create a wrapper to store generic value. So it can support any type of value such as value type, for example, struct or enumeration and etc. So let's begin by here creating a new C file, given a name of cache entry. Okay. So here, let's create a final class and give it a name of cache entry and it should accept a generic in here. And let's just declare the key, which is the string and the value, which is should be the generic type. And let's also declare an expiry, expired timestamp. Let, okay. It should be optional. And now let's create the initializer. Okay. Let it ask code automatically synthesize for us. Okay. So the expired timestamp, let's provide a default value of nil. Okay. And let's create a method. Is cache expired after date okay and for the date let's just use the current date as the default value and here we just need to guard if the expired timestamp exists we should return date is larger than the expired timestamp otherwise it is expired and then guard let else we just return false in this case, the, there is no expiration timestamp, and basically, it won't, it will never be expired. Forget to add the return type of boolean. Okay, 
Okay, that is for the cache entry. Uh, next, let's create a new C file. Give it a name of cache. So let's create a new uh, class in here. Give it a name of cache. It also access a generic. Okay, so this class will wrap the NS cache and let the users to use string instead of NS string as the key. It's also using the cache entry with generic value as the NS cache value. Okay, so first let's create a private let cache with the type of NS cache. And yeah, the key needs to be NS string. This for this NS cache and for the value, we need to just use the cache entry with this generic fee. Okay, and then let's just initialize it. Okay, and next one, let's create a method which is value for key to retrieve the value given a key. Okay, and return type should be the generic uh, fee. And here we just need to check guard let entry using the cache object for key. Okay, the key should be string should be an string so we need to cast this to an string okay else it means there's no cache for this key we just return nil okay and let's also add a print for debugging cache cache doesn't exist for key this particular key continuing on let's check for the expiration if it exists guard not entry is cache expired after that let's just use now else otherwise it's expired so if it is expired we need to remove the value okay but before that let me also create another method to specifically remove the value given a key remove value for key key string this case in this case we just need to info cache remove object for key key we need to always also catch this to an string so continuing on from the for the value for key and in here we can simply remove the value invoking the remove value passing the key okay and Okay, there you go. We have the generated Xcode code cache expired for this key. Nice. And now we just need to return nil in case it is expired. Okay, continuing on here. Let's add a print cache. As, uh, sorry, retrieve it. Value and three dot value for this key. And let's return and read dot value. Okay. And continuing on, we need to also create a method to invalidate all the values in the cache. Remove all values. Okay. So here we just print cache purged all values. And we just need to invoke this NS cache remove all objects okay and next one let's create a method set value to set the value given a key okay value should be fee optional okay because we, uh, user can also uh, invalidate the value given a key by setting it the key to with the value of new okay so for key key string and expired stem should be optional date with the default value of nil okay so by default it won't have the expiration timestamp okay next we just uh, check if the value exists if the value exists then then in the else let's handle the else first so in the else it means the user is setting the value to nil for the given the key we just need to remove the value 
for the particular key by invoking remove value okay now let's go back to the if let value in here we can simply initialize the cache entry okay this is the wrapper to support any type for the ns cache and in here let's use this initializer key should be key and value should be uh the value expired timestamp expired timestamp okay and let's also add a pin in here for the bugging set key with value of value okay and here we can simply info cache set object for key to simplify the api we can use this subscript for the user okay so given a key so this can be looks the syntax can be looks like a dictionary right v so the get will be we just need to info value for key parsing the key okay as simple as that and to set we just need to info set value okay and new value for key so by default it will it won't set the expired timestamp if we use subscript okay so if you see the usage from the complete project so this is using the subscript okay and this is also using the subscript to retrieve the value so the syntax can be look a bit more cleaner right it's just like a simple dictionary using the subscript okay and yeah that's it for this cache we have implemented this swift base cache that support generic type as well as the swift expiration timestamp and that's it for this video hope you like it subscribe if you haven't and thanks for supporting me and let's keep on being a lifelong learner and until the next one goodbye